Tory Black Wednesday and Media Freedom Day will be hosted by the Minister Collins Chibani, Parliament, the MDDA and the SABC tomorrow. Now it commemorates the banning of some newspapers and the arrest of journalists on October the 19th, uh, 1977. The theme for this year is 19 years of media freedom and 10 years of media development and diversity. We are now joined live from our Cape Town studios by Eric Kolwani, the chairperson of the Parliamentary Committee on Communications. Mr. Kolwani, good morning to you. Uh, morning to you and the uh, viewers at home. In fact, let me just rectify that it's already midday, so good afternoon. But can you take us through today's events? What exactly will take place? Uh, it's good I've been misled by you. Um, <laughs> Um, the event today seeks uh, to say let us celebrate our media freedom as a country. As you know that uh, one of the major events which happened in, in 1977, it's when the then minister uh, at that time decided to ban uh, newspapers activities or journalist, journalism, uh, journalist activities. Uh, which included also media activities which were banned at that time. Since then we have been celebrating the 19th of October every year as a day which has been marked as a Black Wednesday because at that day it was Wednesday. So this is part of those celebrations except that this year what we are looking at is that what is it which we have done since the new democracy in 1994. So the celebration we are having, we are looking into that in terms of what is it which we have done, uh, government has achieved, uh, entities like your MDDA and others, what they've done in making sure that indeed there is a progress around the issue of media freedom and a freedom of expression. But what activities or events will you be hosting? Uh, today we are having a seminar here in Parliament uh, where we are discussing about uh, what government has achieved for the past uh, 20 years. Uh, as you also know that uh, this year marks uh, the 10th anniversary of MDDA uh, existence and so on. So we are taking stock, uh, what is it in terms of legislative framework which we have put in place to ensure media freedom and freedom of expression. So we are busy with that as I'm speaking now. Um, I'm me here but uh, they are continuing I'll be joining them after uh, my interview now if we look at this can you take us through what the event actually means for South African and the South African media industry uh, what does this event mean actually is that uh, we we need to understand it in the broader context uh, that it is medium uh, freedom uh, uh, of speech and freedom of expression or the media freedom we're talking about it's actually not directed to us as participants in the e ecosystem. It is the right which is conferred to each and every South Africans. So all what we are doing ourselves as a legislator or journalist uh, or uh, media owners uh, and so on, we are just part of the ecosystem, but this right does not belong to us. Uh, more often you'll find that uh, we behave as it this is our right conferred to us who are participating in the process. But one thing which we wanted to communicate is that this is a right for South Africa and hence it is important for us in particular as parliament that uh, we do have universal service access where all this type of, com of media can be available to all South Africans wherever they are. So it becomes important that uh, the role MDDA which is playing in making sure that there's transformation within media and also um, diversity because one other thing which we are battling with is that uh, still our media is dominated by English and Africans. You see less of the other languages which we have as a country. So it's to say how do we diversify in terms of language? How do we make sure that our people receive many ideas or views so that they are able to make or to take informed decision, not to receive limited views because that encroaches with their democratic right to receive information, to be able to make decision uh, at their own time and leisure and also be informed. Now I pose this question to the press ombud a little bit earlier but I want to pose it to you the info bill as it stands how do you think it will affect uh, journalists in this country? Uh, it, it should not it should not because if there are clauses which indeed uh, will affect the media freedom or journalism, journalism in our country I think that's the matter which should be engaged ongoing because the aim was not at all to interfere or to affect a journalist. It was about, as you all know, that uh, 
states around the world or governments around the world, they do, they need to protect information. Um, all of them, they are doing that. But uh, if there, there are in t unintended consequences, that's the matter which need to continue to be engaged in. Uh, but it's not a bill which, uh, from its inception, was focusing or targeting a journalist uh, for that matter. Um, so. For us as legislators, as we are making legislation, that's why you've got consultation processes where people must come and make presentation and so on, so that we are able to deal with those matters. It was never a targeting or was made to censor probably a journalist. Mr. Eric Kolwani, the chairperson of the Parliamentary Committee on Communications, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.